Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back working on the 3.2 Carrera, but look at this, we have a new interior. So we just got the car back from our boy Juan, and he did a beautiful job on the interior. It just looks amazing, and super big bonus, it's all one color now. The old carpeting was pretty faded and looked very worn, and some places completely through to the metal. We also had him install some Dynamat for a little teeny bit of sound deadening on the car. Now we have had some concerns from some people about moisture underneath the Dynamat, but this car is dead dry. It's been inside, inside, inside for, God, almost two years at this point. It's super dry here in Colorado, so I'm not worried about any trapped moisture, and hopefully we won't get much moisture in the car going forward. I did have Juan check as he had the whole thing apart to check for any type of rust or anything, any type of metal degradation there, and he said it all looked really good inside. Also, Porsche does actually put down some, I think it's like tar paper sort of on the metal as well. So they did sort of the same thing anyways, just for a little bit of sound deadening. And I don't know how much it helps, but um, well, we have a lot of stuff to get through today. A lot of teeny little odds and ends. We got a few teeny things to do in the engine bay. And then we're gonna be moving in here. This is an old seat. So we actually have the two recovered new seats that we need to install. We've got a motor for the regulator. The window over on the passenger side is just not working properly. And our console is still loose. We just have a bunch of little odds and ends that we're gonna get to. I think it's gonna be a fun episode. And let me know down in the comments below if you sort of enjoy these more vloggy kind of just doing sort of random stuff on the car. Or do you like the more structured videos like the last video we put out where we did the full brake job on the 993 rear brakes. That was a big project. And honestly, it didn't get very good reviews. So I just want to ask you guys, what do you think? All right, well, we're going to start in the engine bay and get a few little odds and ends knocked out. Well, we don't have much to do back here in the engine bay and the engine is running great. But if you remember from one of the previous videos, we had a problem with this guy. This is the coil wire and it actually has a little bit of a crack right there on the inside and it was shorting out. So that's not good. So we bought the parts from Auto House AZ and they were in a sealed package and everything. They just, I don't know, just not so great. They sent us a whole new set, a brand new set to go ahead and install. Now, since the right are fine and I'm not worried about them and I've double checked them and they're all good, I'm just gonna be installing the left side which includes the coil wire. And this is the actual coil wire here and it's captured in this block. So I don't wanna pop this all open and just replace the the coil wire. I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace the entire harness. Shouldn't take too long. Should be pretty quick. And I've been trying something kind of new. I picked up some of this 303 aerospace protectant rubber and plastic protectant. And what I've been doing is hitting all the rubber parts with this stuff before I install them. This, the engine bay gets really warm back here and it's kind of a tough environment. And I'm kind of hoping this will help the parts maybe last a little bit longer. I don't know, but it's a good thing to do while they're out. It's really hard to do when they're all in the car. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna wipe all these guys down and we'll get started installing them. I'm gonna start by removing this piece here. It's just, it's kind of sitting right over everywhere we need to be. It'd just be a lot easier with this out of the way. Now we just wanna make sure we get these all back on in the right order. Our top little short wire here is the actual coil wire. That's simple enough. The next one is really short as well and goes over here. And the cylinders are one, six, two, four, three, and five back here. So we're working with one, two, and three. One, two, and three. All right. Okay, let's see, what would be easiest? Probably this long one first. So we can pull this long one off first. And these are a bit of a bear to get off actually. There we go. All right, there's our long one. And it sort of snakes around the coil here and underneath that one. So maybe next we can take our coil wire off because we know exactly which one that one is. Coil wire, short little guy goes here. Long wire goes all the way around. All right, so we, I think that's pretty easy to remember. There we go. Okay, so that's those three. We'll start with those guys. 
This is our coil. This is our short one. And then the long one, which is cylinder number one, snakes in here. So let's put this one here. Make sure that's seated all the way. Yep. Went right in. That's good. Wire goes down below there. This is our coil. And this is our other. This is cylinder number two. Okay. Snake our coil wire on there. There we go. Okay. That's those three. And this block mount here. That's good. And our last one here. Cylinder number three. At this point, we can go ahead and remove them off the spark plugs and get the entire old harness out. And this little guy goes here. Cylinder number three. There, make sure it's seated all the way down. These are all seated. Put our block back on. So the ones we replaced are one, two, and three. So this is three, which is the furthest cylinder forward there. So we're numbered one, two, and three. Go ahead and put our spark plug ends actually on the spark plugs. And it should feel like it went onto something. There it goes. Should snap and go all the way in. All right, that's that one. It's number three. This one is number two. There it goes, there's a the little pop. Ah, went all the way in, good. Well, in fact, we can do our block at this point. There it goes. There's the snap I was looking for. Our last wire is our coil wire. That seats all the way. There we go. Yep, all the way down. Good. And the rest is just to put our, our S elbow back in and also our cover plate. And we're done with this. And you know what? Before I put that elbow back in, I'm going to go ahead and start the car. Make sure it's totally happy back here so I don't have to take it all back apart if I didn't get something quite right. Let me go ahead and start the car and see how we did. This little guy is great for testing spark plug wires. It's just an incandescent, has to be an incandescent test lamp. That's all it is. It's just probe and ground, super simple. So we'll ground this and we'll go run this over all of our spark plug wires and make sure we don't have any shorts. All right, no air and sparks anywhere. Great. Okay, hold on just a sec. Let me turn the car off. Well, that's pretty sweet. We got our new spark plug wires on the left-hand side reinstalled. No sparking at all. They're working just fine. They're doing their thing. So we can go ahead and install our elbow at this point. And we have one last fun thing to do. Remember I said a long time ago when we were adjusting the base idle on the car that was missing the little yellow cap that goes over the adjustment? Well, that cap looks a lot like this. So I went ahead and ordered a new cap. Obviously not super important. It was just sort of a visual thing that I thought really needed to be there. All right, so let's put our little yellow cap on. There it goes, snap-a-doodle. And that's what it should look like. I know it's silly, but it really made me feel a lot better to put that on. All right, well, we're all done back here in the engine bay. Next thing I wanna tackle is that regulator motor on the passenger side window. It kind of got messed up. So let me get over there. I'll show you what happened and we're going to be installing a new motor. So here's our problem. That's it going down. It works okay going down, but it sure struggles going up. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not so good. So I have a used window regulator. I got this off our friend Chad's car. So you remember Chad, he was in the very first episode. He was the one who drove the car and I had him sort of evaluate the transmission for us and everything. And he has a car very similar to ours. It's a white with that same maroon interior, but it's a coupe and he turned it into a race car. And this is just added dead weight for him. So we pulled out a ton of parts and when I saw this sitting there in a box of it, all this stuff, I was like, ah, we have a bad window regulator. Now, why do we have a bad window regulator? That's a great question. It has to do with these switches. So the original switch got stuck and the motor just had power to it all the time. And it just, it must have completely messed up the brushes and the communicator in there. It's probably a big mess. So these switches do that. They get stuck sometimes. The little pins on them start to wear out and they'll get stuck in one position or another. So I've replaced the switch, but unfortunately it was a little too late for the actual motor. Let me go ahead and pull these out and we'll work this, the old regulator out and see where we are.
All right, success, we got our motor out. Now this is pretty different than the other one, huh? So this is the one that I got off of Chad's car and this is ours and hmm, a little bit different. The whole top of it's different. Maybe it's a cabriolet thing, I don't know. But at any rate, all I really need is this bit here, the motor. So I think if I just disconnect it down here, I can probably just swap the motors out, which is really all I need to do. So the motors are actually even a little different size. Check that out. Chad's is actually a little bit longer. Hmm. I might have to actually just scavenge parts from inside the motor if I need new brushes or something. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to check this out. But you know what? I'm going to move to the workbench and we'll check it out and see what we've got. Let's start by disassembling the motor that came off the car. Now it's sealed on the other side, so there's nothing we can do down here. It does look like all of this just basically slides out of the housing. It looks like the whole thing sort of sliding out. There it goes. All right, looking at this, it looks like our communicator's in good shape, although that's probably where it was sort of frying it a little bit, but that's totally cleanable. So we can deal with that, that's not too bad. It's our brushes that are a mess. Look at that in there. That brush right there is completely recessed and kind of a mess. This one looks okay, but the other one's just not doing well at all. Look at the burn mark that's on here. Check that out. Yeah, that's the brush that got really, really hot. Well, at this point, let's see what our other motor has in store here and see if there's any useful parts in there. And look at that, these things are the same. That's actually a really good, really good thing. We have some very, very fine sandpaper here. Get this wet. Let's go ahead and clean our communicator. And also one thing I like to do is go through each one of these in between, each one of these pads, just in case there's something that's fallen in there and it's sort of shorting them out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Well, I think that's it for our communicator. It looks good. And the whole armature looks pretty good there. Bearings look pretty good. We're gonna be re-greasing this, of course, when we put it back in. Just wanna protect the brushes over the top of this. All right, then when we get to here, our little casing should slide in. We can pull our bag out of the way. And now we need to collapse our brushes. Just using little exacto knives here to sort it. There we go, collapse the brushes. Should be able to push this plastic guy down. All right, that looks good. Our brushes are where they need to be. And here we go, pretty simple here. We're just gonna insert this guy back in there. I'm not worried so much about greasing the end of that shaft. As you can see, it just got some grease on it already because we have to push through our, our seal anyways. Okay, there we go. Let's run our Torx bits back in. Okay, and that's the motor all back together. That was kind of intense, but it's all back together. I think we're ready to go. Let's go back to the car and test it out. Let's go ahead and hook up our regulator and see if it actually works. I'm gonna wire here. Here we go, moment of truth. It does work. I wonder if it's fast enough. Sounds like it's getting better. I think that sounds pretty good. All right. Well, I think it's gonna be fine. It might be a little slow still. I'm not really sure, but I think it's going to work. So let's see. Let me go ahead and reinstall everything and see where we are. And it stops at the right spot. All right, woohoo! 
Woo! So that's it for this door, at least for the uh, mechanism there. We obviously don't have the door panel on and we've got this plastic here. We got to deal with this as well. I'm gonna have to probably cut some new plastic. Somebody cut a whole section of it off on the other side. I have no idea why. At any rate, little more work to do, but I think our window regulator is set and solid and seems to be working just fine. I think next I actually do want to tackle the door panel. So we'll get this sorted. We'll get the door panels back on both this and the driver's side. I've got my new plastic piece cut and our first step of course is just going to be attach this guy and then we're going to continue on with the door card. So all right let's get this plastic up. All I'm doing here is just applying a little bit of 3M Super 77 adhesive with a foam brush. I find it's a lot easier than just spraying it all over the door. That's our glue on. Let's go ahead and attach our plastic. I actually had a bit of a problem on the driver's side with the window switches. I cut them in backwards and lo and behold popped a fuse. So I, luckily I had taken a bunch of pictures, but I didn't see any pictures actually of the passenger side. So I've got my trusty dusty little camera and I'm going to take a few more pictures just in case. And you can see some of the water damage on here, huh? That's kind of a bummer. That's why this plastic is so important. And pff, somebody must have taken it off years ago, didn't put it back on, and then some water got in there and it sort of warped this a little bit. It's not too bad. It'll sit flush once it's kind of all mounted. We have three snaps here, one here, one there, and then eh, one on the bottom down here on the other side. So we can just snap our panel in and start from there. We'll make sure we hook up our speaker wires as well. Okay, there we go, speaker wires attached. Let's go through there. There it goes, snappy doodle. And this will help hold it as well. Go ahead and screw this in. And now's a great time if you've got some of these parts that you can't get to later to hit them with a little bit of plastic or rubber protectant. In fact, I've already done the whole panel here. It looks pretty good. It's a little shiny for my taste, but this is vinyl. I don't know. I think it looks okay. I like a more matte finish actually, but it's a really good protectant. Well, it's still fresh in our mind. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the window switch back in. We can do it now. They're kind of set up on the back here. So vertical, vertical, horizontal, horizontal, and another vertical. And I tried to keep them that way and they look like they stayed. So I'm gonna get this back on so we don't mess this up. I'm gonna check to make sure that works. Huh. Well, great example, huh? Uh, so let me check my pictures. I think I reversed these two. I think that's what I did, but I don't know for certain. Somehow I got these backwards, maybe? Yep, I did. I got them reversed. Okay, well, I think we're all set. Here we go. Window going up. Window going down. All right. So the problem was I had switched the two wires on the bottom. Got to be careful of that. Holy cow, these things are so hard to get in right. And now it's correct. Everything's cool. I can put the switch back in. There we go. Into place. Woohoo! Next is the actual door handle here. There's two screws at the bottom and two at the top. But these two screws have to go through in here, through these holes, but the Door handle's kind of in the way, but you can sort of scoot by it, sort of. Next, we have our actual pull here for the door release. And then this little guy, you can see this little slot here this thing just fits over the top of it and snaps down into place. There it goes, snap a doodle. And then to finish up, we've got the cap to the door pocket, which is also the armrest, and then the door pocket itself.
And then finally, the cap that goes on the top of the door. Well, all right, that's our door cards on. Woohoo! Well, we've got several more things to do on the car, but I think I'm gonna cut the video off here. Next time, what we're gonna get to is the seats, the center console, and we still have a bunch of little bits here and there to get done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. Hit the little bell next to it to be notified because you're not going to want to miss any of this content. And then when we get done with this, we're moving to the Ferrari. So a lot of work to do on that car. Well, once again, thank you so much. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.